Peter Freuken, the explorer who used a knife made of his own poop to escape from the ice. There is no doubt that Lorenz Peter Elfred Freuken, or Peter Freuken as he was better known, was a most truly remarkable character, and it seems nothing was beyond this incredible Danish man. He came from a humble background, being born in 1886 in Denmark to a very normal family. Peter studied medicine at the University of Copenhagen, but after listening to a student speak about polar explorers, he dropped out to become an Arctic explorer. He also found time over his long career to become an accomplished author, a well-respected journalist, and an award-winning Hollywood scriptwriter, a renowned anthropologist, and a brave World War II resistance fighter. He was also married three times. He had two children with his first wife, an Inuit woman named Navarana Makupaluk, but she sadly died in 1921 during the Great Spanish Flu pandemic. Since Makupaluk was not a member of the church, the local priest refused to allow her to be buried in the official cemetery. So Peter snuck in one night and buried his wife in secret. Then in 1924, he married a Danish millionaireess who was an heiress to a margarine fortune, Magdalene von Lauritsen, and that marriage lasted for 20 years despite him being constantly away on various expeditions all the time. This marriage was annulled. Then he finally settled down with his third wife, marrying a war widow called Dagmar Kohn. She was a Danish Jewish fashion illustrator whose work had appeared on famous magazine covers such as Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. They married in 1945 in the USA. After marriage, his wife was known as Dagmar Freuken Gale. Peter Freuken seemed to find a spiritual happiness in Greenland. Freuken learned the Eskimo dialect and soon he was looked upon as an anagok, a medicine man in touch with the divine spirits. The explorer dressed in full Inuit attire and described the Inuit people as the happiest in the world. In turn, Greenlanders called him Peter Suak, or Peter the Great. The Danish government had appointed him resident governor of Thule Colony in 1913, a post he held for seven years. He was a close friend of the legendary polar explorer Knud Rasmussen, who came from Greenland and is often referred to as the father of Eskimology. Freuken learned many survival skills from Rasmussen and the Inuits. He had learned how to hunt and eat seal meat, clothe himself in animal skins, and survive against predators who might try to kill him. They went on many expeditions together until Rasmussen died from eating contaminated Arctic duck that had been allowed to ferment the traditional Inuit way inside the skin of a dead seal for several months. Freuken had many close brushes with death in his long career as an explorer. He once survived an avalanche, while on another occasion he fell down a crevasse and lived to tell the tale. Then there was the time he fell through thin ice into the freezing cold sea, having to drag himself out using a rope hitched to his own dog sleigh. And another time when he was out hunting, Freuken seriously injured himself in the thigh with a harpoon as he was descending down a glacier by rope. But even when he was at his own base camp, he was not safe. One particularly foggy day, a colleague nearly shot him by mistake, thinking he was a bear, which was hardly surprising as Freuken was six feet seven inches tall and had a wild, scraggly beard and was wearing a thick fur coat at the time. But his most famous story of survival was said to be when he was buried alive in the snow during a fierce blizzard. Freuken was on an expedition in 1926 to the frozen Greenland wastelands. Unexpectedly, he had been forced to take shelter alone, building a snow cave between the rocks and his sled when a snowstorm had suddenly appeared from nowhere. After he had fallen asleep in the sheltered spot, he had later awoken to find that he had become trapped by the drifting snow, though in one version he said it was because of an avalanche. Whichever it was, the snow had become so tightly packed above him he could barely move in his sleeping bag and was in serious danger of being stuck there, slowly freezing to death. And to make matters worse, he realized he had left his snow knife in his nearby sled, which he could now not get to. In his first attempt to escape, he managed to tear a piece of polar bear skin from the coat he was wearing. He then sharpened it by chewing and spitting on it and waiting patiently for the saliva to freeze rigid. He then used it to slowly chip away at the snow and ice that was trapping him deep below the surface. 
So after many hours of tunneling, passing in and out of consciousness as he did so, he finally came close to the surface only to find himself stuck beneath his own sled. Because of his breathing and drooling saliva, his beard had become moist. Now his face was covered in blood as a part of his beard and facial skin had been ripped clean off when it had become frozen to the bottom of one of the sled runners. Hours passed after repeated desperate efforts to escape. Then a moment of inspiration came to him. He remembered that dog feces often stuck to the tracks of the sled, freezing rock solid. So Froiken decided to make a chisel from his own feces to get out. Froiken did this by waiting for his next bowel movement and then fashioned his feces into a chisel shape as it rapidly cooled in the snow. Eventually, it froze rock hard. If the tool broke, then he was dead. So he waited for some time, then scraped and scraped, finally emerging free from his near icy demise. Froiken, his legs frozen, then crawled for nearly three hours in sub-zero temperatures to the expedition camp. Once he was there, it was discovered his toes on his left foot were so badly frostbitten by his ordeal that gangrene had started to set in. He was taken to the settlement at Danish Island, where the nurse there used the warm, freshly killed hides of lemmings to clean the infected wound. She would lay the tiny lemming hides bloody side down on the rotting toes, and then a few hours later, she would gently peel them off. As the nurse did this, the decaying flesh around Freuken's toes would come off too, having stuck to the undersides of the hides. This process was repeated until the wound was completely free of decaying flesh. But now, sadly, all that remained was skeletal bone, where once on his left foot toes had been. The nurse then offered to bite off the disfigured toes, but he declined her kind offer. In a state of delirium, he instead decided to take the drastic step of amputating them himself, as the settlement had no doctor. So he removed them with a pair of heavy-duty pincers, a chisel, and a hammer. He had to do this without any anesthetic, as none was available in such an isolated settlement, nor could he even use alcohol to numb the pain as he was a teetotaler. Freuken did not seem to learn his lesson, and two years later lost the leg completely to gangrene while on yet another Arctic expedition, having to have it replaced with a wooden peg leg. In 1933, Peter wrote the screenplay for a German movie called Eskimo, which was based on his own experiences, and he even starred in the movie as the captain. Filmed in Alaska, many of the scenes were actually real, including the hunting and wolf attacks. The movie would win the Academy Award for Best Film Editing and be the first motion picture shot in a Native American language. Peter went on to establish the famous Adventurers Club in Denmark in 1938. And when World War II brought about the German occupation of his Danish homeland, he did not hesitate to join the resistance movement there, despite it being at great risk to himself as he was Jewish. Freuken was sentenced by the Germans to death when he was captured and arrested, but he managed to escape with his peg leg by climbing a barbed wire fence without protection. He escaped to Sweden and then after the war moved to the USA. After Peter Freuken moved to New York, he joined the New York Explorers Club. Over the course of his life, he won many honors, awards, and literary prizes, including the prestigious Hans Egge Medal from the Royal Danish Geographical Society. He also settled down and married Dagmar Kohn. They made many friends in Hollywood where Freuken was popular because of his work, and he could often be seen lifting and twirling celebrities above his head. Freuken would go on to win the top prize on the American TV quiz show, The $64,000 Question, in 1956. The prize would be worth over half a million dollars today, but sadly, he had little time to enjoy it. Freuken died at the age of 71, three days after finishing his last written work, Book of the Seven Seas, from a heart attack while walking up the steps to a plane in Anchorage, Alaska. His ashes were scattered over Thule, Greenland. Hey guys, check out this Simple History merch on Teespring. There's t-shirts, mugs, stickers, phone cases, and much more. Link in the description below.